Hello everyone and welcome to the very first Kohi devlog. Earlier in the year I had said that I was going to make these throughout the year and now I'm actually doing that, right? Um, so it's a little bit late, it's a little bit behind, but uh, my primary focus has been actually working on the engine, so it is what it is. But this devlog series is a series that occasionally takes a snapshot of Kohi's development along the way and discusses highlights, various issues and updates, things like that. Being that, uh, at the time of recording, we have uh, well over 100 full episodes, so we have some catching up to do. Each devlog will review roughly 10 or so episodes worth of content, uh, give or take. This one's actually going to be, I think, one or two more than that. And so this one actually starts at the kickoff episode, which is episode triple zero. Also note that there isn't a really set schedule for these, so I'll basically just kind of release them when I have... Uh, time and content enough to make another one. So obviously content isn't the issue here, but uh, time definitely will be. So the goal here is to provide you know newcomers to the channel and or the stream uh, on Twitch. Uh, the feeling of sort of how the project has come along, uh, as well as a brief outline of what has transpired recently, or at least along the way. So uh, it's going to serve as sort of a, a high level uh, overview, if you will, or an outline. And uh, so generally speaking, for those of you who don't have the time to sort of uh, dive in and follow the full streams, um, that is kind of where we're at, right? So anyways, uh, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, so we started off the official trailer release in February 2021. That means this project has been underway for officially uh, over two years at this point. And to recap, uh, Kohi is a game engine that is written... Uh, mostly from scratch in C, not C++, uh, pure C, and initially at least uses the Vulkan API for rendering. And at the time of recording this video, it is supported on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Um, the last one, of course, was added uh, much later in the series. We did uh, Windows and Linux uh, straight away, and then we added Mac OS uh, much later on. I think it was like around episode 76 or so. Okay, so roughly three weeks later, the first episode, episode triple zero, was released. This was mostly covering uh, the project plans, architecture of the engine, and the initial feature set. This is also when the official Kohi repo was created. So from here on, episodes were released on an average of once a week. Sometimes weeks were skipped. Sometimes extra videos were uh, had made it in. Uh, from this point on, I'll only mention time frame every so often for each devlog. Episode 1 saw the scaffolding of the project on the Windows platform, the first of the three platforms to be supported. We reviewed a Windows workstation setup and configured the basics of a build process. Episode 2 was much the same, but instead adding official Linux support as the second platform. Again, workstation setup was configured and the basic build process was set up. The next episode, episode three, saw us implement what would become the first and one of the most important systems in the engine, the logger. This is super important to get working and going as early as possible, as it's an easy way to obtain feedback very early in the development of any application. We implemented various levels of logging to handle different output for different severities of things we run into within the engine, such as warnings, errors, fatal exceptions that crash the application, etc. Episode 4, we switched back to Windows and set up the Windows platform layer in the code base, which included opening a new window to house the application. Episode 5 sees us switch back to Linux for the implementation of that platform layer, which also included opening a window there. In retrospect, I wish I had kept the scaffolding and the platform videos grouped together for Windows and Linux instead of bouncing around, but that's a lesson learned, I suppose. For the next episode, we shift things more in the direction of the initial intended design, where the engine itself becomes a library and a new test bed becomes the executable that consumes the engine library. This is a common design for many large projects, not just game engines. Episode 7 includes the scaffolding of yet another critical system, the memory system. This is something that gets revisited a few times in the series, but provides a common interface for allocations, freeze, and other sorts of debugging and tracking. In Episode 8, a event system is added, which will be used frequently throughout the system as a way to communicate across various systems in a decoupled way. This is used to trigger all sorts of reactions, 
to events like user input, file changes, or changes in application state, for example. Episode 9 sees the setup of a generic input system, which is used to abstract the platform-specific input data in an agnostic way that the engine and application can use. Episode 10 continues the input system, but implements integration into the Windows platform. Finally, Episode 11 further continues the input system by adding Linux platform input integration. At this point, there are no real visual changes beyond the initial opening of a window and various platforms. That being said, the systems that are implemented thus far are extremely important in forming the foundation upon which the rest of the engine is built. Many tutorials out there skip these parts, but I felt it was necessary to cover these first due to the importance of these items as the project grows. In the next devlog episode, however, we'll be finally touching some rendering stuff. So that's going to do it for this particular episode. I wanted to keep these short and sweet, just a quick overview of kind of what happened uh, within the range that we're talking about for each one of these devlogs. And uh, I will do the best that I can to uh, release these a little bit more frequently going forward. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And uh, if you are looking, of course, to follow along this series, I will put a link um, up in the corner. I think it's going to be uh, up this way that you guys can actually go ahead and check out that, uh, that series, right? I will also include links in the description below to the repository as well as koheengine.com, which is the sort of main website or hub for the entire project where you can find more information about its development as well as a little bit of background, things like that. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.